as someone who kind of started to educate myself uh, around digital logic design, uh, an FPGA feels pretty magical, right? Because you can do yes. it in your, your home yes. office. Um, and, and so, yeah, tell me a little bit about like getting exposed to that and maybe some of that like fascination with it. Yeah, so I think, you know, like all good double E's, you go through a class, you know, that does digital logic. And so, you know, maybe you make an ALU or something with uh, like some pals and gals or like a bunch of discrete logic chips. But mm -hmm. realizing that you can drop a chip like an FPGA down on a board and, you know, shoot some code into it after some, you know, magical software stuff happens. Right. And that thing behaves exactly like that chip. Uh, I mean, it, it was just... I mean, it was just really fascinating. And, you know, you, you can kind of see like the older generation of engineer, you know, some of my mentors grew up in the era where like gals and pals, which are like early programmable devices came out. Mm -hmm. And so that was something, you know, you might get 10 gates in a chip or something. And so you could totally customize that chip and then drop that customized chip down. And it would, you know, be a few AND gates and an OR, and an or gate or, you know, some flip flops or that kind of thing. And like the kind of power that you get from being able to do that without having to drop down all this discrete logic. And if you mess up your, uh, you know, your Carnot map as you, you know, optimize all your logic away, or you forgot, you know, that, uh, like De Morgan says, you know, like AND gates and OR gates can do different things in active low circuits and, you know, all of those things. Right. Um, it's, it's very expensive and painful to change those, but like in an FPGA, you just, you just change it and, you know, you, you compile again and you go and uh, assuming you didn't do something really bad, like, you know, turn outputs, inputs and blow up your pins and, you know, like it is still <laughs> hardware and like you can still break things. But, uh, the other, the other thing that I saw that was super fascinating is the thing that you go out with on day one for a product, especially a long life product. So you think, you know, a CT scanner is a, an investment for a hospital, uh, you know, and they want to, they want to have long life and longevity on that thing. Uh, the manufacturer wants to sell new features. And so mm. the ability to go out with something where you, you have a set of features and then in the future you can download more features into it. And it, and it, it it's like downloading hardware like that, that is, that does feel magical. Cause it's, it's stuff that didn't exist on day one and, you know, on day 400 or day 300 or whatever, you can come back in and say, Oh, I'm going to just like totally change this or add this totally new feature. And the hardware actually, you know, in some, some respects changes. I mean, it, it behaves differently than it did before. I mean, obviously the physical hardware is still, you know, exactly how you shipped it, but right. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that was a big feature. Cause you realize you can monetize that and you can provide bug fixes. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of tension between, um, with FPGAs and like FPGAs versus ASICs, right? There's a lot of tension there in the like cost. And, you know, we can talk about some of the trade-offs there, but the, the trade-offs um, in some ways, like it's very expensive to like tape out a chip. Right. Right. And then once you've taped out that chip, uh, I mean, even on like yesteryear's process, it's still pretty expensive. And once you've taped it out, like that's all the thing does. And so you, you have to have all of the functionality in up front. You have to have everything tested, everything validated, anything that you messed up, uh, you basically can't use, or you have to find a workaround or, you know, whereas an FPGA, um, you, you have some flexibility there. And so you can say, well, I didn't even know I wanted this feature two years ago, but now I'm going to download this new feature in and, or we, we have this, you know, totally unforeseen bug that occurs and we can work around that in an FPGA. So we just changed the FPGA. So those things are pretty powerful.